In this video, we're going to discuss how to calculate the labor efficiency variance. So let's say that your company manufactures soccer balls and your management team has set the following standards where you believe you should pay $17 an hour for direct labor and that the company should use 0.5 direct labor hours, which is half an hour or 30 minutes, per soccer ball. So to make one soccer ball, it should take half an hour. And during the period, the company paid $160,000 for 8,000 hours of direct labor, and you, in fact, made 14,000 soccer balls from all that direct labor. Okay, so now we have enough information. We can go and we can calculate our labor efficiency variance. I like to set it up as follows. We've got actual hours times the standard rate, and then the standard hours times the standard rate. And the difference between this and this is going to be our labor efficiency variance, okay? So our actual hours times our standard rate, right here, let's start with that. So our actual hours is gonna be 8,000 hours, that's just given in the, in the problem. So we've got 8,000. And then the standard rate is $17 an hour, that's also given, so $17. So if we multiply these together, we get $136,000. 136,000. Okay, so hold on to that. Now let's do the standard hours times the standard rate. Okay, what is, well, we made 14,000 soccer balls. What should have been the standard amount of hours that you have taken to make those soccer balls? Well, 14,000 soccer balls times 0 0.5 direct labor hours per soccer ball. Okay, so we can multiply this by 0.5. Okay. 0.5 and that's going to give us 7,000. So in other words, to make 14,000 soccer balls per our standard of a half hour per soccer ball, it should have taken us 7,000 hours. Okay, that's the standard. So we're going to have 7,000. Do you see why? It, make sure you understand it's you don't just take the 14,000 and plug it in here as the standard. It's you take the 14,000 soccer balls, but then you have to adjust it by the actual standard how many hours it should have taken to make each soccer ball. That's where I get the 7,000. 7,000 hours times the standard rate. Well, that's the same as before, $17. And if you multiply these out, you get $119,000. It's $119,000. Now, we have $136,000 here and $119,000 here. So now we take the difference between those and it's $17,000. So that is our labor efficiency variance, it's $17,000. Now the question is, is it favorable or is it unfavorable? Well, to figure that out, we've got to kind of think through this. So let's think about it. It should have taken us, so the standard out, the standard rate is the same in each case. So really what is different is the actual hours were 8,000 and the standard hours were 7,000. What does that practically mean? It should have taken us 7,000 hours to make all those soccer balls, but in fact took us 8,000 hours, an extra 1,000 hours that we went over, okay? 8,000 minus 7,000, we, we, was an extra 1,000 hours. So why, why did it take so many hours of direct labor? Why did it take a lot more? It could be that maybe the workers haven't been trained well, so if they're poorly trained, and or maybe they're new workers, we just recently hired them, they don't quite know what they're doing yet. Or maybe a machine broke down and we had some idle time where the workers couldn't do anything uh, because the machine was uh, broken and we needed to wait for it to be fixed and so they're just sitting around. Or maybe we didn't have any demand for our products for a certain period of time. There weren't any orders coming in and so we weren't actually manufacturing any soccer balls for a period of time and the workers were idle. So there are any number of reasons why we could have this uh, efficiency variance. And, and I just want to make sure we put the little U here so you know it's unfavorable. The main problem or the main thing that this is telling us is, look, we used a lot more labor than it should have taken us per our standards to make these soccer balls to, to the tune of $17,000 worth. Now, just if you are curious what the total variance is, you can actually calculate the, the rate variance. So we'd have over here, we had 160,000, which was 8,000 hours times $20 an hour. That's just this 160,000. You take the difference between that and this, 
and that's the 24,000 unfavorable rate variance. I got a video on this if, if you want to go in more detail. But if you take the rate, labor rate variance and a labor efficiency variance and you add them together, in this case, you would have a total variance of $41,000, and that's going to be unfavorable, just in case you were curious. But the labor efficiency variance is 17000 unfavorable.